hopefully we can help you expand your knowledge of your body and how it works. And using this clinically, for those of you who are practitioners, making sure you're giving your patients the, you know, the highest level of care possible is our ultimate goal. And so, so without further ado, let's jump into LL37. And um, this is interesting because um, how would you say that LL37 relates to energy levels in the body? Um, you know, I think the, one of the big ways is going to be the way that it reduces, um, any type of inflammatory process that's, uh, associated with like the microbial load. Um, I think that's a big way because anything that, what is it? The NLRP3 inflammasome that's triggered by oxidative stress on mitochondria due to like my, any type of microbe and any of these infections that people have. So we know that pathway right there is actually going to be um, subverted, but also, you know, on, a, on the other aspect of energy and an antimicrobial situation, we know because, ba ba because mitochondria are ancient bacteria, that quorum sensing that you get when you have any type of infection um, by improving the composition of, of what type of pathogenic species are in the body, you're going to start to, to change the communication and that cell danger response in the mitochondria. LL37 is, is there. I mean, it's, um, it's there with the macrophages. You're going to find it primarily in the uh, epithelial cells in the body. Man, if we if you think of, of those cells, I mean, those are what line all of our blood vessels and our gut and our blood brain barrier. And so LL37 is there and it's just waiting. And then the macrophages, it's kind of like LL37, it's, it's almost like the German shepherds, the police dogs, you know, the macrophages being the, the, the police. And they go out and they'll find any, any type of pathogen that's hidden. And this is where it's challenging with, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, massive rise in uh, res in treatment resistant or antibiotic resistant bacteria. And so LL37, uh, what the research is going into is using this as a bypass and as a therapy that could possibly disrupt the entire antibiotic world. And, and so what we've noticed is that if you use LL37, um, and this is what researchers are looking at it at for is it's got a way to, um, you know, penetrate those, those, you know, essentially the tents or the, the uh, biofilm and then um, smoke out those infections so that your macrophages can get it. So if you think of LL37 is not only is it, uh, you know, it's an antimicrobial peptide, it's known as a cathelicidin. And, you know, just the word cathelicidin means it's a universal destroyer, um, which sounds kind of um, like a rock band or something. Um, the cathelicidins are on stage, but, um, but really it's, uh, but the beautiful thing about it is, um, and the misleading uh, thing about that nomenclature is the fact that it also is regenerative. So you can see uh, phenomenal research on its ability to regenerate what's been damaged. And so sometimes when, you, when you're using some of these uh, anti-biofilm properties, uh, you know, like we'll use time can break up some of the biofilms, oregano, if you use high doses of hyaluronic acid, sometimes the lime will come out of their little spot because it loves to eat that. So you're kind of like fishing it out. But what LL37, uh, what we've seen it do with uh, dozens of our Lyme patients and Lyme and mold are going to manifest in some of the very same symptoms. And so make sure if you're ever treating Lyme that you're attacking the mold at the same time. Otherwise, you might be um, barking up the wrong tree. Um, but the beautiful thing about LL37 is it can go in there and penetrate the biofilm and bring macrophages with it. And then the other thing that, that LL37 is doing is you've got these these, uh, you know, little, um, these, these stem cells, these pericytes, not parasites, but pericytes on the blood vessels around the area where the biofilms are. And then these, these pericytes peel off and become mesenchymal stem cells that then secrete more LL37. So there's more selectivity. And then the macrophages tend to chew it up. So Dan and I've shared this multiple times on Go Wellness, but anytime you have an osteoarthritic joint, you're going to have, um, you know, infection in there. 
and different strains of bacteria. And um, what the stem cells do, if you're using like tissue allografts or even um, you know some allergenic stem cells, what you're going to find is that they'll trigger um, LL37 secretomes from the stem cells. So it helps eradicate the infection. So it's this beautiful regenerative property where in, in the past up until I believe it was, I think that research was 2016, 2017. It wasn't that long ago that we discovered the bacteria in every arthritic joint. And now we're using LL37 to eradicate that. So if you have arthritic joints, um, LL37 can be really powerful for you. Yeah, so it was reduction in LL37 in extended space flight. And they found that what when it reduced, they started getting reactivation of all these latent viruses like Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus. They've even seen a reduction in LL37 with Carposi's sarcoma due to HPV. Oh, no, that's fascinating. Um, and, and so, uh, so it's the decrease in it, because if you think of LL37, if it gets too high, then, you know, you, it can elicit a cytokine storm. And I've had patients that have, um, emailed me about that and said, Oh no, I'm worried if I'm going to get a cytokine storm, but the dosing that we use is so gentle. It's a mild, very small dose. Um, so we don't see it causing that, but, um, but you can also see if the macrophages are dropping too low, the immune system loses its leadership and, and then the LL37 would drop in conjunction with that. So fascinating. So let's jump into KPV. Um, Dan, KPV is another one of these bioregulators. It's just three amino acids. And um, sometimes these smaller amino acid chains, and this is one of the things like LL37, they found that if they put um, a fatty acid on it, it changes its ex expression. And they're finding that they may actually start attaching a fatty acid to LL37 just because it has a greater benefit. Um, KPV is no different. It's just the way these proteins are folded. And if you think of a triangle, like a triangle is the strongest shape in, um, you know, from a physics perspective or a geometry perspective. And that's why these, these tripeptides are so powerful is because they turn on the genetic expression and then they silence the things that aren't working. KPV is one of these rare peptides. The majority of these peptides are going to be injections like LL37. Um, some can be topical, some can be oral. KPV seems to be, um, it resists uh, some of the gastric secretion so it doesn't get broken down. And it's naturally secreted in the, um, you know, in, in not only in your skin, but also in, in the digestive tract. And, and so uh, what they found is the mice who had KPV in the water, within two weeks, the ulcerative colitis was reversed. Whereas the group of mice that just got water, their colitis persisted. And so, um, and then there's been other studies. There's one out of the Czech Republic where they found that uh, patients who had colitis, and if you think of colitis, this is, these are ulcers on the inside of your intestines. And so think of skin disorders, you know, uh, psoriasis, eczema, dermatitis, KPV works really well, especially if you inject it into the infected areas or inflamed areas. Um, but what it does is it helps heal that connective tissue. Um, uh, KPV is similar to melanotan, it, but it doesn't have the nausea producing effects. Um, but melanotan works on the MSH alpha pathway. So the uh, the melanocyte um, uh, pathways. And, and what happens is you don't get the tanning from it, but it activates the skin as a protective agent in your body because there's, you know, you've got uh, trillions of bacterial species crawling around your skin. Um, and, and the KPV actually helps activate uh, that, that core defense system. And so I use the analogy here as it's got healing energy because you know, it works on the pathway known as the Wei Qi. But uh, tell us a little bit about the Wei Qi, Dan, and, and um, how that works with the alpha melanocyte um, pathway. Well, that's our, that's our, like our circulating defense, right? That's our first layer of defense against uh, any, any type of outside or external or, you know, environmental pathogen, basically. So <clears throat> one of the evils. So 
you know, it's going to protect our, our body. And it is the, like the initiator of our initial immune response. You know, when we think about like when the, the way chi is activated because there's like been in some invasion, uh, there's like disruption in like maybe irregular sweating, um, with our body, or we get it in like the, what we call the muscle layer. People get the aches and pains, uh, in the body. Hey everybody, Reagan Archbald here. I hope you enjoyed the Go Wellness Show and maybe learned a couple things you could apply to your practice. If you're a healthcare entrepreneur who wants to work in an academic think tank with like-minded humans who are just like you, looking to provide better service, better quality of care for your patients, reach us at info at and we're happy to do a free practice analysis for you.